We've never seen anything like this before. It's on a scale nobody ever imagined. Even the government is admitting it's worse than what the official numbers show. The Fed themselves are sending out warnings in every direction. But what will come of it all? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to look at what has been happening with the jobs numbers. It's unbelievable. I'm going to show you the stats from many different sources so you get the full picture. If you open up the news today, you're going to get one view. You're going to get get one number, but I'm going to show you this in depth. I'm going to give you it from all angles so you know exactly what's going on. Let's begin. A record 20.5 million jobs were lost in April as unemployment rate jumps to 14.7%. So you've heard this number. I'm sure you've already seen the news. Unemployment, 14.7%. I'm going to show you why this is not the real number. Of course, things look better than what they had predicted. Economists had expected a loss of 21.5 million and the unemployment rate to surge to 16%. So as long as you're underneath those expectations in these cases here, you have no reason to worry. Stocks can rise higher and higher. And this is the joke because all they need to do is play around with their estimates and their forecasts and they can manipulate how things are perceived. Truly an embarrassment. The real unemployment employment rate, which includes workers not looking for jobs and the underemployed surged to 22.8%. I'll give you those stats directly from the BLS. I'll explain more in just a moment. Here's the chart that corresponds to that jobless rate in April, the highest on record. I just wanted to really acknowledge the fact that in any crisis, in any recession, you always see the same pattern. The unemployment rate head further and further down, heads further and further down, heads further and further down, and then something happens to trigger it where it spikes higher. In this case here, we've never seen anything like this before, but the principle is the same. It's always going lower and lower and lower until it doesn't. And Part of that is because of the way that they calculate unemployment. I have an entire video about this, which I will try to link at the end of this video explaining unemployment and how it works. But essentially, if you've been work looking for work for a period of time, you end up falling off the statistics. I know that doesn't make sense, but that's the way it works. And they do this in order to make the numbers look prettier. You can see how many people are actually part of the labor force participation rate. That gives you another way to look at it and there's more depth to it. But I just wanted to show you this to give you an idea of what has happened historically. Industries hit hardest. The leisure and hospitality industry saw the largest one month net decline in payrolls amid the issue that's going on right now. You can see clearly at the top of the list, far exceeding any of the others, education and health services, professional business services, retail, and so on. You go all the way down the list. But there's something that isn't covered by all of this, and that is those that have had their salaries reduced. That's one very important factor. Another is how many people are getting less hours than they really want. So you're technically employed, but you can't make ends meet. U.S. jobless rate likely much higher than 14.7% according to the Labor Department. And this is important because when you see the unemployment rate, you're getting something called the U3 rate. This is not the official unemployment rate as they would project it to you. This is just the number that's reported. There are many official rates. The BLS provides those stats. And you should be following along with what they say and what they do, but not just that you U3 rate. We need to look at the others. We'll get into that. But I wanted to show you the fact that even the Labor Department themselves is acknowledging this. Let's go into depth. Millions of U.S. residents were counted as employed in April despite having no job, suggesting April's true unemployment rate was closer to 20%. That's much higher than the official 14.7%. The jobless rate should have included people on temporary unpaid leave. One assumption might be that the additional 7.5 million workers, which is described in the paragraph above, should have been classified as unemployed or temporary layoff. They are actually admitting this. The numbers would have been much higher. They're not going to revoke
revise it, but they're just commenting on it. Now think about that for a second. Clearly there's a hole here. Clearly there's a problem with the stats. They're not going to revise the statistics in a later month. You're not going to see those coming back later on, which would be okay, even though the news wouldn't cover it, but they're not. They're just letting everybody know this is what happened. It's a fraud. It's a fraud. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to see news articles telling me that things are better than what they thought they would be. I'm going to see comments down below saying shut your mouth and meanwhile these people are being fed lies. It's, it's an embarrassment. There's no other way to put it. This is the information directly from the BLS website. Don't go to CNBC to get your data. Or you need to look into it on the page itself. I only show you that because it's bigger font. It's easier to give you a description, but I always go to the BLS. Here you can see economic news release right now, brand new data, April 2020. If you look right here, you're going to see the U1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. The U3 rate, I know the font is small, the U3 rate right here on the side is showing us right now 14.7%. 14.7, that's the number you're going to see for the foreseeable future. It wouldn't surprise me if they started to bring that rate down, made everything look nice and rosy. But if you look at the U6 rate, it shows you, I'll read it for you, total unemployed plus all persons marginally attached to the labor force. Yeah, you're working one hour per month, you're marginally attached, plus total employed part-time for economic economic reasons. Yeah, we can only give you one hour this month. No work for you. Sorry. As a percent of the civilian labor force plus all persons marginally attached to the labor force. Okay. It's much more descriptive. It's much more broad and it gives you a more accurate depiction of the unemployment rate. I don't think it is complete, but it's much more accurate. They give you the U3, which as far as I'm concerned is is worthless. It's a worthless statistic. That right now is 22.8%. 2.8%. But the news makes it seem as if this is okay because it's only temporary. Well, that's just it's so ridiculous to think about because if you go back in history, you see there are waves, there are cycles. Everything is temporary. The ups are temporary, the downs are temporary. Nothing makes sense anymore. This information comes from the Chicago Fed, which I had outlined in a previous video. I kind of just give you a brief description. But what you can see is the U cov rate. And this is something that they developed in order to give you a broad view of what's happening with the unemployment rate. They sort of give you a range where they believe this is. So the March estimate is up here, but I want to focus on the April estimates. They break it down. They give you some scenarios. The way that they see it is a big range. You could see anywhere between 29 and 34.6%. Now I really want to give you the stats as updated as possible. When they come out with the new ones, I will give that to you, but this is the expectation. Somewhere between 29 and 34.6%, depending on how you look at it. Essentially the same kind of information as the U6 rate, where it's not really accounting for people that want to be working more, that really need to be working more, but they can't. This is from Shadow Stats. I'm sure you know them. The way that they recalculate all the different stats like inflation and unemployment and so on. This right here happens to be the unemployment rate. It shows the official U3 and U6. That's the red line and the gray line. But the blue line is their own version of the unemployment rate, the Shadow Stats rate. According to their statistic, the unemployment rate is actually 35.7%. And certain people would say, oh, they're not right. They're not accurate. How do we trust that shadow stats, John Williams? But even the UCOV rate, which is provided by the Chicago Fed, is nearly within this range. So it's not too far off when you think about it. It's all dependent on how you want to look at it. Is somebody working an hour or two a month employed? Technically, yes. They're technically bringing in some money. I get that. But is that really accurate? I got a couple charts here. Take a look at the non-farm payrolls change. It simply falls off a cliff. All of the previous recessions, look, this goes back to the 40s. You see these little dips down here all along the way, little tiny dips in the non-farm payrolls. And it just shows you over this period, there have been these little bumps in the road. It looks like nothing compared to what we see today. If you were to stop this, let's say back in 2019, it would show you these 
big peaks and valleys along the way as we go through the recessions. But because this is so extreme that we are dealing with right now, it makes it look practically like a flat line. Number of Americans, quote, temporarily out of work. That number has been off the charts, as you can see. There are these occasions when people find themselves out of work. Don't worry, it's going to be temporary. Well, I'm not so sure how this is going to be temporary when you have a whole bunch of people trying to get back into the workforce when the companies might be a little bit hesitant. Record 103 million people are not in the labor force. The participation rate sinks to a 47-year low. This just gives you an idea of what's been happening, where we actually saw that change. I'm not sure if I have a chart on this, but the labor force participation rate, which was looking quite bad for a period of time, started to slowly, and I mean slowly, really increase just slightly here. And that was a good thing. They started to point to how fantastic this was looking. Looking, but then suddenly it dropped down off a cliff. Out of the Wall Street Journal, businesses struggle to lure workers away from unemployment. Some workers are making more from unemployment than at their old jobs, complicating reopenings. This is going to be a problem as we can see this in the coming weeks and the coming months. There's no doubt. Check this out, 42% of small business owners say they've had to close their business as a result of what's happening today. How many will not be able to reopen? How many will reopen, but will have to lay off people as a result? They're not gonna be able to survive. The amount of money that they're paying for the rent of their place, the inventory that's just been sitting there, some things you can't simply keep for a few months. It's not a box on the shelf, it's something that has has to be moved out. What about all the restaurants? What about so many different factors here that are not being addressed by any unemployment rate, the U3 stat and so on? It's not going to show you what's really happening. We can look at the stock market. It's doing fantastic, obviously. And why? Because there's a lot of cheap money being thrown in. The people who are buying into this dip are making the exact same mistake they did in January and into February. They don't care because their belief is if if it falls any further, the Federal Reserve is just going to come in and print more money. And then, of course, we have what the government is doing. And you could see the time it took to add a trillion dollars to the federal debt. Previous instances, you know, going back a few years, we have 72 months here, we have 22 months, and if you go all the way down, the newest one to add to the list, 28 days. It took 28 days to add a trillion dollars onto the backs of the American taxpayers. This is disgusting, this is embarrassing, and people should be ashamed who wish for this to continue continue to go on this path. This is what we are seeing right now with stocks around the world being pumped up by funny money in history has never ended well. You can cheer and you can yell and scream, but in the end, it has consequences. That's all for this video. If you found that informative, hit that thumbs up button. When you do, you're supporting me. Thank you very much. Just click one button. Click one button before you go and you're supporting me. Thank you very much. If you want to check me out on Instagram, on Twitter, I'm doing content every single day. You can catch me on there at the Money GPS. If you want to learn about e-commerce, if you want to sell online, you weren't sure about this, is this the right time? All those questions are answered in my free e-course. You can get that at the AmazonGPS.com. If you want to understand the financial system, but you don't want all that jargon, you don't want all that garbage, my two books will explain that for you in very simple language. Check them out at the link in the description if you want the audiobook, themoneygps.com. Hang on a second, don't go anywhere. You want to know how unemployment rate really is? What's the deal with it? You got to watch this video. I explain it. Check it out. I'll see you there.